everybody and welcome to this Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. Today we're going to have a quick look at the autopilot features, mainly for the GA aircraft. One thing to note, not all aircraft come with an autopilot, so take that into consideration before you select your aircraft. For today's tutorial we're going to use the Diamond DA62 which features the G1000 from Garmin and we'll also take a look then at the Cessna 172 with the steam gauge cockpit. So first up we'll get some power into our aircraft and check it out. We we'll get our master battery and our avionics turned on here as well. Cancel any alerts that we need to see. If we move over to our navigation on our G1000 you'll notice we have a number of buttons both on the right hand side and down on the left hand side. I created a direct GPS flight from LIAA down to LIRU. So if we click on the flight plan you'll see our departure and our arrival details. We can use the range to either zoom out which is that way Morph, <laughs> or zoom in, which is this way. So you'll see roughly where your route is going to be. So we're taking off from here and we're going to be landing here. That's your flight plan. You also have another option here to go set direct course to, um, if you want to change or if you're flying through a flight plan and ATC might ask you, you can go direct. Simply go into here, you have your FMS controller the smaller of the two dials will control what letter or number, it's only a matter of rotating them, and the larger dial will actually move your cursor where you can select. So the details that go into this are going to be the ICAO codes, be it for an airport or a waypoint. So for example, if we go for an airport, and let's select Lima, India, Romeo, and Uniform, It'll display the name of the airport in which you're flying. You can then hit enter. The activate question mark will start flashing and you can hit enter. This is now going to give you a direct to mode. Over on the left hand side then we have a number of options. We have the autopilot master switch. You have the flight director. You have a heading, altitude, navigation, VNAV, approach, back course, vertical speed, nose up and nose down, and a flight level change. We'll go through a few of these once we get up in the air. On your main panel, if you rotate to the side here just so we can see all our buttons, at the moment there is no autopilot information being fed into the system. You'll also notice the CDI as we drain our battery here. The CDI is the course deviation indicator. If you're going to fly on GPS, Keep pressing the CDI until it comes to GPS mode. That's very important, otherwise the aircraft won't follow any sort of a course, unless of course you have the VOR frequency tuned into your navigation radios. Before we leave the ground, we also want to set our initial altitude, 3000 feet. And you'll also notice we have a heading bug. This heading bug, currently pointed to north, we can rotate this to a heading we wish, usually a runway heading, or if you're going to be flying to a specific area, VFR conditions, or if ATC tells you to turn to a certain heading, this is to turn you in that direction. There is a center button on it that'll actually center the heading with the current direction of the aircraft. Once you're airborne, you can now go ahead and activate your autopilot. Now just remember, if you select heading mode straight away in your autopilot, the aircraft will bank and turn in that direction. So we're gonna set our heading bug to our current heading. We're gonna turn on our autopilot and we're gonna select heading mode. Once we have that set, the aircraft is gonna react and it's gonna keep you on that heading. We also now want to tell the aircraft to climb to our altitude of 3000 feet. To do that, we'll jump down here. We're gonna to go to V speed. And when we go nose up, click it five times which will indicate 500 feet per minute in climb. The aircraft is now under autopilot control. It's going to maintain this heading and it's going to climb up to 3000 feet at a rate of 500 feet per minute. If you want to maintain a certain airspeed, you could instead use the flight level change mode, for which that'll pitch the aircraft either up or down to maintain the speed of 148 knots in this case. At this stage now, if we want to select our GPS mode, we can go over to our autopilot, this panel, and select nav. Once we hit nav, the aircraft will start following the magenta line and it'll bank to the left. 
On the main screen, you'll see an indication of your aircraft and also the main magenta line that indicates your flight plan. So the aircraft will now start making its way until it intercepts that line. So as you can see, the aircraft is now turning back onto the magenta line. We're maintaining our climb right here based on 148 knots. If we go back into V-Speed, we have pre-selected 500 feet per minute, as you can see in here. So the aircraft itself will fly off of this heading. You can use direct to mode if you wish, if you wanted to change your destination. So this will start flashing again using your dials down here. You can change all of these and choose an additional airport. So for example, if we want to go to Chiampino, we can now hit enter. Do you want to activate? We're going to say yes. You see that your course has changed on your map and you're now going to a different airport really handy ways of using your autopilot. So for the G1000, this is going to be pretty much uniform in any aircraft that has a G1000. This panel here, as I said, autopilot master switch on or off, your flight director switch, your heading indicator, your altitude hold mode. So for example, we're currently climbing. If we needed to hold at say 2700 feet, we'll visually watch 2700 and when it's aligned, if we click the altitude hold mode, It'll keep the aircraft at that altitude until further notice. Don't mind the bumps, it's kind of windy here today. If you then look at your V-Nav or vertical navigation, if you have your flight plan loaded and you've told it where your step, various step climbs and uh, speeds, including your altitude, it'll read that information direct from there. You also have an approach mode, that helps when you're going, uh, going in for a landing at an airport. You'll have to make sure that you have your comm and nav radios tuned in to that approach. BC represents back course, vertical speed, nose up or nose down, and flight level change. Have a play around with this, but just be mindful, before you activate the autopilot, just make sure that you sync heading where you're going to be pointing towards, and that your altitude is somewhat set, or you set your V speed first. If we disconnect the autopilot, we now have full control of the aircraft. So for example, if we now want to go to a new altitude, and we're going to set that in at say 4,700, and we want a V-speed to go in at 800 feet per minute, you'll see the visual aid of your flight director pointing where the aircraft needs to pitch to. And as soon as you activate your autopilot, the aircraft will bank up to maintain a climb of 800 feet per minute. So if we jump over to the Cessna, you can see that the autopilot panel is an awful lot different. So we'll zoom down to it, have a look. So you can see from here, you have an autopilot master button. You have heading, nav, approach. You have your back course, your altitude hold, your nose up or nose down. That's for your V speeds. You can arm it and you can select your barometric uh, pressure. That'll display it here. So what we're gonna do, we have our heading indicator just here. We're going to turn this guy right up to the point of our aircraft and we're going to select our altitude to 2,000 feet. We'll arm our altitude, we're going to turn our autopilot on, we'll go heading mode and vertical speed will bring it up to 500. So our autopilot is now on, the aircraft is going to hold this heading and you can see our vertical speed is now climbing at 500 feet until we get to 2,000. The same rules apply, you have either GPS or nav mode. If you're in nav mode, you'll have to make sure that your VORs are tuned in using your navigational radios into the correct frequency. You can also use it from your Garmin 430. You can go GPS or V location. We'll keep it on our GPS. If we want to go to a direct to mode, again, we can set our course. The same principles apply. If you push down on the cursor, it activates the menu for you. Can go ahead and select an airport from here. Let's say it's going to be Champino as well, uh, with the bigger of the two wheels. Scroll down to activate, then press enter, and because we have GPS already turned on, we can then go on our autopilot to nav mode, and that'll bank the aircraft around in the direction of that airport. 
So guys, that's it for this short tutorial on the autopilot systems, mainly for the GA aircraft. Until the next time, happy flying, and we'll see you soon.